And good evening. Thank you for joining us for another edition of In the Line of Fire, where we seek out and secure solutions for Afro descendants. I'm your host, Arsalan Aziz. And I'm your host, Ak El Mumin. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good evening, brother. How you doing? Good, brother. How you doing? Everything has been going fine thus far, and I've got a feeling it's going to get a lot better in this next hour. In the Line of Fire. Yes, sir. So how was your week? My week's been very productive thus far. I've been able to meet with a lot of black people uh, in the community, and we're starting to hear of a lot of progress being made in initiatives being taken to improve our conditions. So I'm very excited about that. I'll be bringing y'all some results here shortly. Yes, sir. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to open in the name of Master Farad Muhammad, Almighty Allah, to whom praises are due forever, and in the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the last and greatest messenger of Almighty Allah, peace be upon him. And in the name of the Honorable Silas Muhammad, the leader of the Lost Found Nation of Islam. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum as-salam. Um, ba- but today I just want to spend some time on some basic things. Okay. Uh, I feel like our people from time to time need to hear some terminologies that, that need to be expounded upon. Because it is because of these terminologies and our different interpretations of what they mean is that causes us to argue and not agree on points and then consequently not work together. Okay, okay, that sounds good. I was actually speaking with some people, and uh, we encountered some uh, disagreements. And uh, when I was speaking with them, I had to bring to the forefront um, the idea that a common goal is what motivates people to work together. Not so much their differences, but the things that they have uh, similar in their uh, objectives, which helps them to cooperate more effectively. And so I gave an example of our enemy, which we know is the white man, the devil here in America. Yes, sir. Our continued <clears throat> oppressor. And he makes a good example of how to work together. Um, I don't know if we all, if anyone follows politics or listens to um, any of the political parties in their rhetoric over the airwaves and on television. But when they come together... Uh, You have the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the Independents, the Green Party, and all sorts of parties that have their own political agendas. And they all have different views. And you may hear them disagree on 99 out of 100 issues. But on one issue, where it is to perpetuate the white uh, social structure and power structure here in America, they agree on. And so they push their differences aside and decide to work together on that one objective. And I think what you're what you're going to give us is going to help us to find more similarities in our speaking and in our discussions so that we can find common causes to work together. Is, is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. So, um, well, first I want to start with the, the basic idea that what Master Farad Muhammad brought us is a nation. Yes, sir. That's right. Uh, and so many times when we're dealing with the devil and his technology, um, they like to throw different meanings on terminologies. Mm-hmm. But um, so when he when he uses the word Islam, he's trying to put a different definition or meaning out to the world mm-hmm. of what that word means. But, you know, the way we mean it is different. What Master Framahan brought us. And not only that, he brought us the nation of Islam. So that's the key word. That's right. Um, he brought us a standard or a flag to represent us as an independent nation. So what we're actually asking is for land that we could call our own. But within that, I would like to um, deal with some basic terms. Like okay. one of the things that the Honorable Silas Muhammad teaches us is that what Allah is or what God is. So that's the very first thing I would like to start with today is that I want I would like our people to know what is Allah, not who is Allah, not adjectives like Allah is most powerful, he's the most high, he's the most, the best knower, and not like adjectives and nouns that describe him, but actually define what Allah, or Allah is the Arabic word for God. Okay. So then I would like to define, well actually actually I would like the Holy Quran to define what Allah is, if I may brother. All right. Uh, And I think because that's, it is so important for our people to know what God is. So, as Mr. Muhammad, he received this personal revelation he shared with us as part of his um, foundational teachings yes, sir. in the Lost Foundation of Islam. 
uh, this is uh, chapter 22 in the Mulana Muhammad Ali translation, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us is the better English translation of the Holy Quran. Yes, sir. Um, so verse 6, this is chapter 22, verse 6. That is because Allah, he is the truth and he gives life to the dead and he's possessor of power over all things. Okay. So and what Mr. Muhammad is saying is that truth as as a life form or truth cannot just exist in space by itself it cannot just float it's, it's just it's not a, alive in a tree in a rock you know mm-hmm. and, and it he's saying that it is alive in us black people okay so the black nation black man black woman mm-hmm. black children mm-hmm. we we have that allah or that truth the spirit of truth or the will of truth it, it, it's as if it's a life form mm-hmm. like you know that there's different states of being like there's solid there's liquid this gaseous state where it has no definite shape or form okay. was well, kind of more kind of like gaseous, but he's teaching it's a spirit. So it's, it's you could feel it. It's like electricity, but that's the spirit of truth. Mm. And that is what Allah is. And that is what makes black people Allah. But but here's the catch. We need a living brain that produces our mind. And within that mind is where that spirit of Allah is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, this is what... Um, Mr. Muhammad teaches makes us Allah. Okay, so what what would you say to uh, other Muslims uh, throughout the country that would say, well, we're taught that Allah is a man and Allah is a people. Um, if you're saying that Allah is some as a, as a form of a spirit, how would you relay this type of understanding to those? I, I would agree with them. Okay, there's no disagreement. Now what was happening is that Mr. Muhammad agrees with them, Mm -hmm. but now he's taking us within the reality or the understanding of how man is God. The the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us indeed that the black man and the black woman are God Mm -hmm. in person, but he did not define what made us God. What about us God? Is it our skin? Mm -hmm. Is it our melanin? Is it our bone structure? You know, what, what about us makes us God? Mr. Muhammad, that's what he came to do one of the things he came to do is to define the honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings which are from Master Farah Muhammad to whom all praise I do forever is to show us what Allah is I mean in other words when I say that I mean man is of two parts as Mr. Muhammad teaches one part is physical one part is spiritual in other words we concurrently we sit we our bodies our physical bodies are sitting here but at the same time our spirit or our mind when I say spirit I mean your willpower the, the will inside your mind mm-hmm. and that inside of us is not flesh or blood okay you know it's not of a physical thing but yet it's real and we can feel it because we're both aware and we are both seeking truth we're seeking knowledge of god we, we care about spiritual issues political issues only our spiritual part cares our flesh and blood does not care anything about that mm. and so we're saying the same thing yes black man is god but it's the spirit of truth inside the black man's mind that makes him god uh, we, we have a um, piece uh, coming up from Khadija's Corner. Okay, okay. And, Always uh, like Khadija's Corner. Yes, sir. Today she's going to be talking about social networking. And one okay. quick note that, uh, how I would like to ingress into that uh, video is that uh, what we're saying is like there's a revolution in the Middle East going on. Okay. And, they were, and I, what caught my eye said, did Facebook bring Egypt down? Mm. Or worse to that effect. And now they're saying, can it also bring Syria down? Mm. Because the, f- the power of Facebook. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and uh, Khadija is going to be addressing the power of social networking and what kind of influence it could have worldwide. Well, let's go to Khadija's corner now.